So something I hope you've noticed uh, as we've worked through this model build is that at no point have we had to write down a set of ODEs to be solved or had to think about how those ODEs should be solved. We've simply focused on capturing the elements that we felt were present in our system and um, letting the software take care of the more mathematical aspects of adding the various terms to the equations and then solving those equations for us. Now in this particular section I want to just say a few words about those equations because as a power user developing models it is useful of course to be thinking about your problem in equation form and to have a good understanding of the problem you're solving and that can help you to think about what information you need to provide to the model, what information you you want the model to provide to you, and what parameters need to be fitted, and so on. And one of the places where you can get information about the equation solved is in Dynachem Help. If you're working in simulator fitting or optimization, you can just press the F1 key to open the help. But if you're working in the Excel environment, you should click the help icon at the extreme right of the ribbon. There's a number of ways in which you can interrogate the help. You can browse directly to an area that you know is where you want to look. Today I'm going to use the index and I'm going to click on equations solved to go directly to the page I want. And here you'll find there's a link to a PDF uh, contained in our resources website that lays out really what each Dynachem statement implies in terms of differential equations to be solved and terms to be added to those equations. So there's a detailed contents page really mapping one-to-one -one with our statements and then there's a detailed nomenclature at the back of the document. Uh, first of all it talks about phases and flows which are key constructs and then I'm just going to hover on the transfer to, to to talk about that and to give you some hints as well that are relevant to our model because I am going to ask you a question in a few minutes and uh, then I'm going to help you to answer it. So when we have a transfer to and here we're focusing on the effect of the transfer to on the ODEs that relate to the main solution phase there is of course a mass balance implication the rate of change of the number of moles of each component is going to change according to the feed rate and the number of moles in the feed tank. Similarly, the energy balance for the solution phase is going to depend on the temperature of the contents of the feed tank, the kind of sensible heat of dosing, potentially also on any heat effect directly associated with the, the charging of the feed, and of course the thermal mass of the fluid, the solution phase. The uh, volume of the solution phase, especially in a set volume model, is going to be governed by an ODE. So that's a further uh, implication of the transfer to. And the heat capacity, which we corrected in the last video to be an appropriate value for an ethanol dominated phase, that is also subject to an ODE according to the difference between the heat capacities in the feed phase and the solution phase. So you can look at those equations for any statement, including reactions and all of the others, anytime you wish. And that could be quite, I think, useful for you as a power user. So my question for you right now is, how many ODEs are we solving in this particular problem that we've been working on? And um, you probably want to get a little pen and paper or something like that to think about that. You can press the pause button if you like to have a think about it and then come back to the video. But uh, I will just say a few words that I hope are helpful. So looking from top to bottom on process, this is this would be my way of answering that question. I can see we're doing a set volume liquid. So I kind of know immediately there's going to be one ODE for volume. We're doing an energy balance, so there should be an ODE for temperature. That's two ODEs. We have heat capacity, 
uh, we're feeding. There's potentially a different heat capacity in the feed vessel. That's three ODEs. We have five components that we're tracking in the solution phase. That's three plus five equals eight ODEs. That's the phase. So really what I'm thinking about there is, you know, D, V, D, T, D, T, D, T, D substrate, D, T, D, reagent, D, T, the left-hand sides, if you like, of ODEs that we will need. Then when I look at the heat transfer statement, I'm not expecting that to contribute any additional ODEs, only to provide some sources and sinks, particularly in the energy equation. So that's going to add a UA delta T log mean to the temperature equation, so no extra ODEs from there. Then I come to the feed tank, set volume again, so I know the volume is going to be tracked. I don't think there'll be any terms in the energy equation for the feed tank, so I'm not going to count that, so I'm up to nine equations. I don't see any terms entering into the CP equation for the feed tank, so I'm going to go 10, 11, for reagent and ethanol. Similarly, when I look at the transfer to no extra ODEs, just sources and sinks in ODEs. And when I look at the reaction statement, no extra terms, just, pardon me, no extra ODEs, just extra terms that will represent sources and sinks on each of the components and will also contribute to the energy equation. So no extra ODEs, I'm still at 11. Final equation on the process tab is for yield. It's an algebraic equation, so no extra ODEs. I'm saying 11 ODEs. I don't know what number you came up with. Um, I guess it was probably quite close to 11. There is just one little wrinkle in my approach, and it is, it is that I didn't look at any other uh, worksheets. And uh, the only kind of item that could throw out my, my estimate is on the data sheet. And on the data sheet in this model, particularly for scenario one, we are imposing solution temperature. And that is really a signal to the software to say, disregard the ODE for solution temperature. The user is dictating the values for that profile. So that is going to reduce in scenario one, the number of ODEs from 11 to 10. How can we verify this? We can open the model in simulator there's no real need for me to run it but I will I'm going to also open both scenarios don't think I've used this particular button in these videos so far so I'm just saving myself a few clicks by choosing open and run all so the first scenario opens the second scenario opens and um, they, they open in separate tabs. The tab separators are at the top of the screen. I'm going to um, not pay too much attention to the solution. I'm just going to use this Sigma button, Edit Solver, which is down in that left-hand corner of the plot. And I'm going to bring that up and see how many ODEs were solved. There's quite a few other useful features on this, um, this dialog. But today I'm focused on just how many equations, a number of equations in scenario one equals 10. The difference in scenario two is that we didn't impose the temperature. If I click on the Sigma button in scenario two, it will indeed indicate that there are 11 ODEs being solved for scenario two. So I hope that was a useful, quick little dip into equations and ODEs. We're going to build on that kind of thinking in subsequent videos.